This podcast is brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. From heating our homes and powering our vehicles to cell phones, clothing, and medical equipment, oil and natural gas makes everyday life better. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Learn more at ndpetroleumfoundation.org. Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Plain Talk Live. Happy to be with you. Uh, I, if, if you're from North Dakota, you've heard of the Fighting Sioux. Uh, it used to be the nickname of the University of North Dakota's athletic teams, probably most notably the uh, the hockey team. That's undoubtedly the most famous, uh, uh, most high-profile uh, sports program at the University of North Dakota. Uh, but there was a years-long battle over the Fighting Sioux nickname with one side um, saying that the nickname was, was offensive, um, the other side saying that no, it's it's a part of our our heritage, uh, both both for for Native Americans and and non-Native Americans, and and believe it or not, they were people of of all races on both sides of this issue. Um, it was a very long debate. It was a very involved debate, and it ended with the University of North Dakota uh, being rid of the nickname. Um, despite uh, there were ballot measures, there was the legislature got involved at one point. Um, it was uh, it was quite. Quite the thing. Um, I, I, of course, at the time was a supporter of keeping the nickname, um, not because I necessarily wanted to offend anybody. I just, I, I didn't, I, I think I didn't, I didn't see it as, as being offensive. Um, but obviously, other people agreed. It's an interesting story, put it that way. And telling us that story now is Matt Fern. He's made a film about it, a documentary. Uh, it's had a theatrical release at this point. Uh, it's available through video on demand, and now it's going to make its television debut this weekend, uh, Easter weekend, over the holiday. Matt, how you doing? Doing great, Rob. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So why why is it – what's left to tell about this story? I mean, we all lived through it. Um, I think most of us remember what happened. What can your documentary reveal that, that we don't already know about this? Well, I think uh, there's a lot to learn about it. The whole reason I started this film was I heard a lot of um, news stories about this issue over the years. I've been to a Sioux hockey game when I started this film, uh, more of a movie guy, um, but uh, really had never seen this issue kind of told from uh, a bigger picture. And so I went out and interviewed tribal leaders, students, alumni, bloggers, reporters, politicians, and super fans, and, um, super fans, and um, tried to, and tried um, to um, really understand this issue um, from all sides and also kind of document it because I started in 2013. This is just about eight years. Um, and uh, the name and logo, the statewide vote had just removed it from UND's athletic um, teams. And so uh, I thought this is a, a bigger story to tell, um, and it'd be good, good to get it all on record uh, so we could move on. So uh, t- tell us, I mean, who, who did you talk to? I mean, how did, how did you go about making this film, and, and what, what inspired you to, to do it? I mean, what, what inspired you that this was something that, that you wanted to, uh, to, to, to do? Yeah. Um, for the first part of your question, reached out to as many people as I could. Um, we have over 50 interviews in the film. Um, we talked to people in the NCAA, talked to reporters and bloggers like yourself. You were gracious enough to do a, a, an interview. Um, we filmed on the reservations, um, talked to tribal leaders, um, the Wayne Stengem, the attorney general, um, Tim O'Keefe, the alumni director at UND at the time. Um, and uh, the reason I did it, I mean, it's a lot of work. This has been eight years and only last fall did it get released in theaters and on demand. Um, but uh, I believe this is an important story to tell between native and na- non-native communities in North Dakota. Um, I, I, my background, I did a lot of filming on reservations across North Dakota, and I thought there was a big lack of awareness of what's going on and the culture there, and um, just have seen and heard a lot of issues of Native and non-Native, um, you know, misunderstandings is a good way to put it, um, and I thought this would be a good uh, story to tell to have those hard conversations about race, um, and um and I thought the logo was a good kind of foundation for that conversation. 
you know, it's it, it. The interesting thing about that is we're we're still having a lot of those debates today. I mean, it, it, matter of fact, uh, this year the Cleveland Indians baseball team is going to be operating without their a uh, lot. Well, they're, they're not the Indians anymore. They're um, you know they're they're going to be. I, I get they haven't picked a new name, so I don't. I, I guess I don't know what they're operating as. The Washington, uh, what used to be the Washington Redskins, is now. Um, you know, operating as as the Washington uh, football team. So uh, there's a lot of stuff like that where you know we're we're continuing to have these these debates. And frankly, I, I can tell you, you interviewed me for the uh, for for the piece, and I should make it clear, I I haven't. I'm, that was my sum total of my participation in the uh, in the film. I wasn't like uh, Matt didn't cut me a check to uh, to put this beautiful beautiful face in his film. Um, in fact, he, he probably would have had a bigger audience if he didn't include me. Uh, but, I mean, I, I, I could certainly understand something like the Washington Redskins or the Cleveland Indians where, you know, some of their uh, some of their imagery, their logos were were a, like like a, like a caricature of a Native American. That, that's frankly, it's, it's not very flattering. And, and I think um, looking at it in a modern context is is not not a good thing. Um and I can understand transitioning. I, I think what really was was tough for me with the Fighting Sioux um, fight is just how much Native American support it really didn't have. I mean, there was a very outspoken group of Native Americans who, who they, they, it wasn't just that they weren't offended by it or that they were ambivalent about the nickname, but actively campaigned to keep it. And as a matter of fact, the only public vote that we had on the nickname specifically – um, is we looked at, you know, you look at Spirit Lake, the Spirit Lake Reservation held a vote and they voted, if I'm remembering correctly, it was well over 60% in favor of keeping the nickname. So it was, I, I think it was a unique debate, even within the context of the overall debate about some of these sporting nicknames and, and, and depictions in media. Yeah, um, you know, and certainly one person doesn't speak for our whole um nation of people, uh, but we did uh, find a lot of people on reservations um, for and against the, the the name and logo. And the film really doesn't try to take if a I'm side. We really try well to do a balanced 60. approach um, where we show um, just the facts and we show the opinions on each side of it. Um, but yeah, the Spirit Lake was able to vote um, and Standing Rock was not able to vote. And we interview some people on the tribal council for and against that issue. Um, and they kind of explained their reasoning, um, why they didn't want it to be a public vote. Uh, basically, you know, Dave Archambault, um, the formal tribal chairman, who was a councilman at the time, um, he said that his main reason of um, not supporting a, a, a vote on that reservation was that the government won't even um, honor it, um, which um, kind of ended up being true. Of, um, they said they didn't want it after this period of time, um, and the legislature um, uh, could a statewide uh, ballot over the issue. Yeah. Um, so all that's in the film here, and uh, I think people will, um, I think learn a lot on both sides of the issue yeah and it's and it's tough because you can you can even come back on that rebuttal and say well I, I mean it's hard for for anybody on standing rock to say that standing rock spoke when they didn't have a vote either um you know i mean that's tough i mean standing rocks leaders spoke um you know and, and they certainly are, you know respectful of their point of view whether i agree with it or not but i mean that's that that was always the tough thing throughout this is who gets to speak for this? You know, who, who gets to say who, who's, who's the final voice on this when there's so many people involved. It's certainly standing rock, not the only tribe also uh, involved. You know, you have, you have other native American tribes as well that, that also want to have their say and feel like, like their position is, is every bit is uh, every bit is important. So um, tell us a little bit about the reception. I mean, you, uh, this, this was uh, debuted at the Fargo film festival it's been in a theatrical release. People have seen the film. How, how have they reacted to it? Uh, really great uh, feedback so far. Um, a lot of people um, kind of, like I said, feel like they kind of understand the other side a little bit more. This has been a heck of a journey just to get it out. Um, I talked to you last year about um, it was supposed to come out in theaters in May and then the pandemic hit. Um, so pushed it back to um, the fall um, and 
theaters were, were hard pressed to, to get people in the seats there. But the feedback I got was, was really good. I'm waiting for some bad tweets here, but uh, I haven't seen any yet. Well, and it, how big of a deal is it to get it on TV? Uh, I mean, because it's been on, it's been on video on demand. It's been in, in theaters. I mean, does TV, I, maybe this is terrible. It might, our, our friends, uh, because my employer owns WDAY, so maybe I'm going to get in trouble for this. But, um, I mean, does it matter that it's on TV? I mean, not, obvi- you're going to tell me it does, obviously. But <laughs> Well, I don't make, I, I make movies for people to see them, you know, and I'm, I think, uh, I don't care if people watch this on an iPhone, on a TV, or on a big screen. Uh, just the more people that can watch this film, uh, the better, I believe. Um, and so I reached out to Forum Communications um, right after the theatrical release and uh, just thought, how can we get this out to the most amount of people? Um, and they um, were really awesome to partner with to get it on WDAY Extra, um, as well as behind the Inform paywall. Um, but uh, it is just to clarify on TV, just in in the North Dakota, Minnesota area, um, you know, the movie has a life cycle here from um, theater to on demand to TV. Um, I'd love to get it on a streamer, um, and I'd love to take it internationally. I think um, you know Netflix has proven there's an international market for movies, um, and I, I I'm a big proponent of telling stories and and entertainment in North Dakota because I think we have a very special story to tell and a unique story to tell. Um, and so ultimately, I'd love this film to get all over the world um, through a streamer. But uh, no matter the platform, I'm just happy people are watching it. Do you – what did you learn from this? And, and this, this is one thing in, in my years of, of writing about topics and political topics and, and covering stories and everything is it seems like when I dig into a topic, I always learn something that surprises me. So was there something that surprised you when you started working on this where you thought – well, I know all about this, so I'm just going to go out and document the voices. But you got into it, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. I hadn't considered that, or I wasn't aware of that. Was was there, was there a moment like that for you during this process? Yeah, there's a, a whole lot of them. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions um, that I found uh, uh, kind of different answers for. For example, um, there's misconceptions that a lot of the people who were for the logo were paid um, by the people of the Ralph or paid to be proponents of the logo. And uh, that wasn't true. Um, the, I was aware of it before, but it just always hits home. The state of reservations in North Dakota and tribal communities in North Dakota um, are a very um, difficult situation. And I think there needs to be a lot more awareness uh, to the communities in North Dakota. Um, and then just also how much Bennett Breen, the original logo, uh, the artist of the original logo, how much he got paid. Um, he only got paid a few thousand dollars. Yeah. And so that was very surprising to me as well. Um, but yeah, there's a whole lot. I mean, we really peel back the layers on this film. It's an hour and a half. Um, and, and I think people learn a lot. I think people are hearing an hour and a half about – because that, that, that's one common reaction when I've talked to people about this and I've told them, yeah, I'm in this thing. and um a lot of people are like, why, why are we still talking about that? You know, we, we, we went through all that. I'm tired of it. And now you hear, oh, it's, it's an hour and a half of it. You know, what, why do I want to, what would you say to people like that saying, why, why do they want to invest an hour and a half of their time in this? Well, number one, I mean, I really try to make it entertaining. Um, you know, it's <laughs> and I'm, really I'm cool saying that, that I'm not, I'm not shooting down your, I'm not, I, I just, why is this story important enough to take an hour and a half of time? Right. I, I'm not right. doubting your skills as a storyteller and a filmmaker, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I probably I, I took that the wrong way. Uh, you know, this the story of just between Native and non-Native communities is still a very big issue here today. Um, just even with the legislature right now and the debate of including Native American um, history in classrooms, um, it just is a constant debate of that culture and uh, and, and that clash of cultures. And so um, I think people can can kind of learn a lot about the tribal communities and also learn a lot about um, just the politics behind this. This is just a name and athletic logo. And uh, it, it really has, has become a huge business and uh, um, just a huge um, 
uh, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, just a huge business behind yeah. it is really well, that, important. That, that's one of the things, too, that, that was eye-opening for me. And I've, I've written a lot about collegiate athletics, and I think people familiar with my work know how I feel about big-time collegiate athletics, which is that it, they're a distraction. Um, they are not a healthy thing for academic institutions. I think a lot of people probably disagree with me because we're a culture that loves sports. But um, that was sort of when I was when I was writing a lot about the Fighting Sioux, was was just looking at the amount of money. And, and you talked about Bennett Brian, who, who by the way is Native American himself, although not not uh, not of Sioux and ancestry. But um, just how much money they make is astounding. Um, it's, it, it really is a, a big, big business. And I, I think there's a part of it, um, there as well. And then, you know, there's another part of it where, I, again, I think we can agree that we don't want, I, I don't think it helps anybody to have racial caricatures just out in our culture as acceptable talismans or nicknames or logos or what have you. I can understand that. But one of the arguments that I always thought was compelling that came from the Native American supporters of the logo and nickname was that, you know, for, for them, it was a connection. It was a way so that their communities weren't out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, that was one of their questions. Is this, you know, the, historically, the sad history behind the reservations is that's kind of what the settlers did to them, is, is we herded them onto these reservations. They were out of sight, out of mind. And so their argument was this keeps us out in the culture, right? This keeps us out and, and we're loud. And I can understand the argument saying, well, that's not how we want to be out, out, out and loud. But I, I, to me, that was always very compelling, especially because the nickname of the University of North Dakota teams now is the Fighting Hawks, which is about as generic and soulless a name as you could possibly come up with. It's not really connected to North Dakota in any specific way. We have Hawks here, um, but you may as well have called them the Blades of Grass. I mean, they're everywhere. I, I don't there's no connection there anymore. And there's a part of me, and again, being entirely respectful to the people who, who you know, are, you know, are find you know the idea of a Native American person as a as a logo or a mascot or something. Um, I could, I under, I'm respectful of that point of view, but to me, it always it felt like we lost something. You know, it felt like we lost something that was really connected to a very important part of North Dakota history. Yeah, I, I can I can see that viewpoint. I would um, I would encourage us as North Dakotans to just find other ways to connect um, with that history and with those communities. Um, you know, and, and like I said at the beginning, this movie can be a document of it. Um, we can help kind of have some closure um, to not forget our history. Um, but um, you know, um, I, I think. There's got to be more ways than just a, a mascot yeah. um, where we can really be involved with the well, that, tribal that's, community. That's whatever. that's fair. Although you know, there's always got to be a starting point. I mean, there's always got to be that that place. I I don't know. It's it's not not none of this is is one or the other. None of this is binary. I I just I don't know. It was what it was. It was the debate we had, and and one side of it lost. And and what's interesting too, Matt, is even today, like like an angle of that was the NCAA throwing its weight around i mean in a lot of ways if the ncaa hadn't come in and said you have to get rid of the nickname or there's going to be sanctions for your athletic teams um but for that i think we, we might still be the fighting sioux at the university of north dakota today and so even now now the, the ncaa is is throwing its political weight around again very controversially we're having a debate about um trans gender athletes and the NCAA is is you know everybody's talking and I, I and I don't even know what the NCAA has said specifically but every oh the NCAA is going to sue and so again it's it's we're we're sort of cowering in fear of this 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 enormous entity that might you know if we make our laws a certain way or we make decisions as as the public here that we might be I mean that dynamic too is playing into this it's it's amazing I, I guess my point being it's amazing how many touchstones that are still even even now years after the debate's over are still relevant today yeah one of one of the surprising things to me was this issue has been going on um, since the at least the 60s and 70s, if not earlier. And the documentary does include a lot of archival footage um, over the years. 
um, showing a small group. I mean, it started as a very small group of students trying to speak out against this. Um, and I agree with you 100% that uh, without the NCAA making that move um, to really um, put the pressure on University of North Dakota, uh, they probably would still be the Sioux or uh, be one of the last universities to, to change their name. Um, but yeah, it's been going on for a, a long time. Um, and the NCAA uh, is a big part of, of the film. Uh, they gave us a statement to include, um, and we did film outside their building, um, but uh, no one directly from the NCAA um, was interviewed for the film. However, we did find some um, uh, public domain clips that uh, kind of helped shape their viewpoint. So, so tell me about being on television. What are, the, what are the specifics? How do people find this if they want to watch on their televisions on Sunday? Yep, they can go to imforum.com to find out uh, where to watch WDAY Extra. It's the ABC affiliate uh, across North Dakota and uh, into Minnesota. Um, you can go to our Facebook page, uh, Fighting Over Sue. We have a bunch of graphics showing where you can find that signal. But it is uh, 7 o'clock Central uh, this Sunday, Easter Sunday, um, on WDAY Extra. Um, and... Um, it's 90 minutes, and uh, I, I'm really excited for people to see it here and, and to, to hear this whole story. Well, I am I am too. I, I got to admit, I, I I missed it. I wanted to go see it in the theaters. I wanted to write that it was coming out in the theaters because I, I do think that this is an important story to at least reflect on and you know maybe look at some of our – again, look at some of our modern issues through – the lens of, of of history right that's what we're supposed to be learning from right is is our is our history uh but unfortunately i was i was in the hospital with covid all through december and just haven't really been able to watch it so i'm going to be tuning in on sunday i hope all of you do as well uh fighting over sue.com is the website to go to if you kind of want the the central hub for information is that right yeah, uh, not only can you find more about it, um, but uh, there's a 15-minute extended uh, and unrated cut you can watch, um, and you can rent or own it right now. Uh, but fightingoversue.com for extended version of the film. And uh, and to you, Rob, I got to say thank you for uh, being part of the film, and thank you for all you do for, for North Dakota as a journalist. Um, even being kicked out by COVID, uh, you've come back stronger than ever. And so uh, North Dakota is very lucky to have you. It's yeah. Just, well, kudos to the awesome work you're doing. COVID almost took me down, but I, I made it. So, Matt, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, sir. Yep, happy to be here.